it's Saturday, May 11th, 2024, and I'm down here at Jim Thorpe Station in beautiful Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, to tell you about one of Reading and Northern's most popular trips. That trip would be the bike train, and we run this trip one weekend a month. There's two departures, Saturday and Sunday, each day. Departures are at 9.15 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. And what this train does is you bring your bicycle on board. We load your bicycle in these gondolas right here. You get to ride in the coaches that are further back. And we're going to take you 25 miles up the line to Whitehaven, Pennsylvania. And then you get to bike back on the beautiful DNL Trail. The bike ride is actually a mile longer than the train ride. It's a 26 mile bike ride to get back here. And that's because on our rails, the Rockport Tunnel cuts a mile off of the trip. Now you can bring your own bicycle. And this one here, this happens to be mine. E-bikes are allowed as long as they meet the rules for the state park. You can check those rules online. But basically my understanding is it has to be under 100 pounds and it has to have pedals this one meets the requirements and if you don't have your own bike or if you just want to try out an e-bike you can rent one from our partners across the street Pocono Biking and you have to make that decision at the time you buy the tickets if you decide to rent from Pocono Biking they will come through with the paperwork while you're on the train and you'll get your bike in Whitehaven now the final option you say that 26 miles of biking sounds a little too rough, but you want to get a longer train ride and you want to see the entirety of Lehigh Gorge, you can simply skip the biking and buy a round trip ticket to ride. Now when you arrive here at Jim Thorpe Station, you're going to want to bring your invoice to the ticket booth. You can either bring the printed copy or a digital copy on your phone. And our ticket agents will hand you the tickets. Most of them are already pre-printed and if not, they will print them out and hand them to you. You need to have those tickets before you board the train. And when you're ready to load up your bike, all you have to do is walk it up to the Pocono biking folks and they will load that into the gondola for you. And as a heads up, if you have any saddlebags on the bike like I do, you will have to remove those before loading the bike into the gondola. So when you pack your bags, just make sure that it's something that you're able to carry onto the train with you. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? The 915 departure ride train is now ready for boarding. Please have your tickets ready for board only where there is an open door and step off for the uniform car most present. Take your time and watch your step and thank you for riding the Lima Gorge Station Railway. Alright, and here's another pro tip for you. A lot of people board the front of the train and just grab the first seat they see, so it tends to fill up quick and get crowded. You can usually find more open seating if you go towards the back of the train. And we've got our car host Chip here. Chip's also a cyclist. He could get back here about 10 times quicker than I could, but uh, he's working today. I'm riding. <laughs> Take good care of us, Chip. All right, I will, James. Our trains leave the station promptly, so be sure you and your bicycle are on board before your departure time. For the next hour, all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride through the beautiful Lehigh Gorge. Our trip is narrated so you will learn a lot about the history of Jim Thorpe and Lehigh Gorge along the way. The coaches are heated in the cooler weather, and you can open the windows to get some fresh air on the warmer days. We do not serve food or beverages on board our train, 
but feel free to bring your own to enjoy along the way. We are family friendly, so all we ask is no alcohol or tobacco. There are clean restrooms aboard each coach for your convenience. Up to Independence Junction, the DNL Trail has paralleled our tracks mostly on the west bank of the Lehigh River. Here, our train crosses over to the east bank of the river, while the trail remains along the west bank. We will cross the river again and rejoin the trail just before our destination in Whitehaven. Okay. You got it. Good you got that for me, Bob? Thank you. You got it. Thank you, Chip. Yeah, you got it. Enjoy. All right. You're kicking right, me off you. the train. <laughs> Alright, so when we get to Whitehaven, you'll get off the train and then you'll come up to this grassy area here to wait for your bike to be unloaded from the gondola. And our car hosts and the Pocono biking folks, they will hand your bike down to you. Oh, there's my bike. And take note too, there is a strip mall right down the hill from the train here. I know there's a pizza shop, an ice cream shop, and grocery store. If you do need anything before you start your biking, that's the place to go. You'll find there's limited restroom opportunities on this trip so if you haven't used the one on board the train you'll want to stop here and use this one before you hit the trail there'll be another one in Rockport and then another in Glen and Oco and that's it between here and Jim Thorpe if you enjoy trains there will be several opportunities to stop and watch them go by including watching the bike train begin its return trip to Jim Thorpe.
Okay, and Jay and I have stopped at Buttermilk Falls. This is one of the scenic highlights of this trip. You can see a lot of people stop. And we're just north of Rockport, which is also the major rest stop midway through this ride. Okay, so we did our photography and videography at Buttermilk Falls, and we've decided now, since nobody was using this picnic bench, we're going to stop here for our lunch break. This is approximately the halfway point in the trip back to Jim Thorpe. Usually it's crowded with people. Today it's actually on the quiet side. And we're going to have lunch here with the beautiful Buttermilk Falls as our backdrop. And then I'll show you after we have our lunch, there's a, uh, an official rest stop up in Rockport where there's bathrooms. There's actually a trailhead with parking for cars. It's pretty much the only access point between Tannery and uh, Glen and Oco, at least easy access point. All right, so we are coming into the Rockport trailhead here. And these school buses you see here, these are the buses that bring the rafters up to this. This is one of the areas that they get in the water. Anyway, if you were to go to the right here, there's parking up that hill. We're not going to go up there for now. We're going straight ahead to the rest stop here. Uh, this is some indoor bathrooms. These are really nice. And uh, this is really your only opportunity for a bathroom break between Whitehaven and Glen and Oco. And when you get back to Glen and Oco, you're almost to Jim Thorpe. All right. leaving Rockport here even though there's some interesting things to stop and see we're gonna ride straight through to Independence Junction and why are we doing that that's because the next bike train which should be up in Whitehaven right about now unloading passengers we're gonna catch the train itself coming back through Independence Junction Alright guys, and here it is. This is uh, known as Independence, Independence Junction on the railroad, also known as Old Penhaven. We've been riding on the trail bed of the Old Central Railroad of New Jersey. And right in front of me here, off to the left, this is now riding in Northern Tracks. That's the former Lehigh Valley Railroad. And this spot we're coming up to, this bridge crosses Black Creek and where these tracks come together up ahead that is uh independence junction we're gonna stop before that though this was formerly the town of old penhaven believe it or not guys there was a hotel a post office and i think a railroad control tower and some other buildings here uh what you're seeing right in front of me was actually a turntable and uh, this used to be a location that was only reachable by rail or boat now it's really only reachable by rail and uh, bike trail, or boat, I guess. <laughs> but uh, we are going to wait here. We are going to catch the return of the second bike train of the day, and, and then we will continue our journey back towards Glen and Oco.
right, so this is the only point on the ride other than Jim Thorpe Station that you have to cross the railroad tracks. So you do want to be careful doing this here. If you're going to ride across them, approach them perpendicular. And more importantly, look both ways. Make sure a train's not coming. And rest assured, I did that. So just south of mile marker 127, we come to Old Penn Haven. And if you know the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway, this is where our train stops. Our engine does the runaround and then continues back to Jim Thorpe. the train have a little head start. We don't want to make it too easy on them. Wave into the rafters and kayakers in the river below. All right, when you reach mile marker number 122, which is just before the Glen and Oco rock cut, you're almost there. And you're probably feeling about as worn out as I am. But you're almost there. The riding actually gets easier. This is where the gravel part of the trail, at least in this section, ends. And we're going to veer to the left through the parking lot. There is another restroom facility here. It's not as nice as the other two, but, uh, you know, they say when you got to go, you got to go. And uh, it's your last chance for a rest stop before you get back to Jim Thorpe. But you know where I'm not going to bring you along for? The restroom. Sorry, guys, you're going to have to come out here and explore that for yourself. Oh, you're no fun. I'm no fun. Jay says I'm no fun. Yep, that's right. But I'll show you where it is, and uh, it is right here. So if you did stop and use this rest area here, what you want to do is turn left. Now this is the only part of the ride where you do have to contend with vehicular traffic other than the Jim Thorpe parking lot. But you'll ride through this little parking area and then there's this wooden bridge that crosses the Lehigh River. When you're on a bike it's easier to just stay on the car lane here. Uh, the pedestrian lane's a little narrow, and there's usually pedestrians on it. So you're better off just staying in the car lane like Jay and I are doing. And then you'll ride... You can ride close to the fence here, and then you'll see just up ahead, after that private crossing gate, uh, the trail will pick up. It'll be um, on our right-hand side. You can see right up ahead past this crossing gate, the trail actually does split off from the parking lot. So you do have a guardrail separating the trail from the traffic. And you can ride either on that pavement or you could, uh, you could get over onto the trail portion here. It's your choice. Now 
this is one of my favorite parts of the ride coming up here. And it's literally the only uphill on this entire ride. Uh, we're going up a slight incline up to the Coalport Bridge. And the reason there even is an incline is this bridge was raised a couple of feet about 20, 25 years ago to allow bigger freight trains to pass underneath. Both the Reading and Northern Line and the Norfolk Southern Line pass underneath the Coalport Bridge. And this bridge we're going on to now is the Nesquahoning Bridge. This is the number one scenic highlight of the entire trip. You'll see a lot of bicyclists later pulled over here to take in the view. I'll stop now and give you a brief peek. And continuing down the trail, we've got the abandoned PQ switch tower. That was abandoned by the Central Railroad of New Jersey in 1972. There used to be a rail yard inside the Y here. It's now just a bunch of trees. And up here is Nesquahoning Junction. And here we're coming up on the Jim Thorpe Rail Yard. Now when you pass the rail yard here, you want to make sure you stay to the left. If you're not a railroad employee, that rail yard is off limits. It's private property. And you'll want to stay safe anyway and just stay on the bike trail. This is nice here because if you started in Jim Thorpe, we're almost to Jim Thorpe. And you can see it's actually downhill. I'm just coasting right now. It is one of the nice things about this trip is the last couple miles are actually the easiest. It's got the most noticeable downward slope. So if you're feeling fatigued right at the end, take heart gets easier. Come out to the parking lot in just a minute and then it's paved. Definitely smooth sailing from there. And here we officially join the parking lot, even though I've been riding alongside it. This is the paved portion. There'll be a couple of Porta Johns in the parking lot. You can use those if you need to. They do keep them pretty clean. Uh, but there are real restrooms in the station in town if you want to use those instead. Welcome back to Jim Thorpe. If you rented a bike from Pocono Biking, you can return it to their store across from our train station. Bike train tickets cannot be purchased online at this time, so you'll have to call our ticket office at 570-325-8485. You can also buy tickets the day of the ride at our ticket booth in Jim Thorpe, but be aware that these popular trips often sell out in advance. Our bike trains run rain or shine, but if you decide not to ride the day you reserve, you can always exchange that ticket for a future ride. I hope you enjoyed this guide to our Lehigh Gorge bike train, and I hope to see you on board one of our bike trains very soon.